Good evening. I am so pleased. What a marketing campaign we must have had to make all of you folks show up. And hopefully we will guarantee that it was worth your time. Our time is so valuable these days that uh, I would not want to abuse anyone's, okay? Here's the agenda. Through the evening for one hour, and we're going to try to keep it to one hour. If I mess up in terms of talking too long, it will be my fault. Uh, in one hour, we're going to try to do our presentation. No questions during that one hour. At the end of one hour, we're going to give everybody a good half an hour to answer, uh, ask questions, and we'll do our best at answering them. We may not have all the answers. Right? Uh, beyond that half an hour, we'll sort of take a, a very two or three minute break right there. And if anyone needs to leave, please do so. All right? And uh, don't, don't worry about it. We're going to try to put this all online when we're all done, too. OK? So that's the agenda. The uh, boards around the outside here are more to help your memory in terms of when we were farther along on the presentation about what somebody might have said and so on. Hopefully that will be of help to you. We've passed out cards also so that if you have questions and you got the question right now, write it down so that we'll make sure we'll, we'll answer it afterwards. All right? All right. So well, I want to get into the agenda here and let's see. We'll see how our stuff works here. Ah, I almost forgot. One of the things that I wanted to make sure to acknowledge and so on, is there anyone from city council here? Anyone? Anyone from the staff of the city of Rochester here? Where's the mayor? Okay. Uh, we have a few others. Let's, that was just, there's city council. Uh, how about Edgewater Resources? I think they're out of town right now, so I'll give them a buy. Uh, Edgemere? How about any contractors that are involved in regards to the marina project? Uh, Crane Hogan? Pike? Uh, maybe somebody who didn't get the bid? Okay. So we have no other experts in the room. Aren't okay? That's too bad. All right. Again, there's the agenda. Introduction. Who am I? Uh, Dr. Richard Young. Uh, why did I call this meeting? A lot of you got a good idea, but we'll go over that. Dr. Young will be doing the understanding of Lake River and Marina site. What are some of the critical points of success, failure in regards to the project? I'll, I'll take back over, and then we'll get into questions. All right. Hopefully we can go through it all. We'll, we'll see how things go here. So, who am I? Uh, I'm a Rochester resident. I'm part of Holy Cross uh, Parish. That's how I got into this. Uh, originally from Crescent, New York, on the Mohawk River. So I know about rivers. I played a lot on that river. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Bachelor of Arts uh, Mathematics under St. John Fisher. I've got a Master's in Systems Design and Analysis from the School of Advanced Technology at SUNY Binghamton. All right. I've done a lot of independent study with Dr. Young. He's instructed me in a lot of different ways, and he's been very helpful. And probably since about the 1st of November, I probably have spent about 20 hours a week doing research. My wife would rather have me do something else, but that's what I've been doing at least with 20 hours. And it's been well worthwhile. So I have some experience, I have some knowledge uh, that probably most of you have not had the opportunity to uh, delve into. Uh, for instance, there's over on that table over there, there's one book that's about a ream, maybe a little bit thicker, that's all the boring tests in regards to the whole site, no matter how old they are. I've gone through them all. There's a series of documents online that the city of Rochester provided, and there's a lot of good information in there. They've done a lot of homework, right? I don't want to take that away from them. The problem is that they're not really paying real good attention to it, and they miss a very important point, which Dr. Young will get into in regards to the geology. My cohort, Dr. Young. Now, uh, this is right from the Geneseo uh, website, and I started to list all of the different credentials this gentleman has, and I got to five, and I sort of gave up. All right, and there's five more, by the way. You can see them online. I believe I have them uh, in a loose binder here as well. A great, great gentleman. 
He's been wonderful with me to ask someone out of the blue to help you about a project like this and uh, get the response that I got from uh, Dr. Young. has been absolutely fantastic. I can't say enough about the gentleman. And he's definitely a friend of the Shellac community providing this type of information. How did I, uh, or why did I call me? Well, let's start it back a little bit. Maureen Stiles over there happens to sing with me. She pulled me into this by asking me to do some video work. All right. Uh, as you notice, I did video tonight. I've got sound. Uh, yeah, I did, I did all the slides too. <laughs> and uh, second thing that got me involved in this is when Greg Wykamp was here, and he did a presentation about all of the different places he looked at in regards to suggestions that came from a lot of you people about what the marina should look like, what kind of development you would like. It was interesting that he acknowledged all this great stuff. But at the end, you know what he said? He said, and therefore we're going to need a 10-story building. I need to break even. In order to break even, I need a 10-story building. All right. There's some reasons why even that simple formula may not work out for the other thing that bothered me a lot is I went down to the uh, Shalott High School meeting that the city of Rochester had, mm -hmm. all right, and I was interested to see what the final plan was going, or at least the, the current plan was going to be, and the city of Rochester passed out this document, which somehow was trying to answer all these questions that Shalott Strong had addressed, and telling us how Shalott Strong was totally wrong. All right? There was some stuff that maybe they were correct on, some of it they were nitpicking, but when they start uh, attacking the people that elected them, it makes no sense to me. So, you know, dander got up a little bit. Another reason why I want to get more involved. Then the, the big thing, bike construction. Bike construction, as far as I know, is a very, very good organization. They've had maybe problems over the year, but they're a good construction company. Out of the blue, they walk away from this project. City doesn't bother to sue them. They don't sue the city. Everything's fine. Wait a second. How many of you people would give up $10 million and still say everything's fine? All right? So it got my curiosity up at that point in time. And that's when I started reading and, and learning and so on and asking questions. And very quickly I realized I needed a good resource to be able to answer some of the questions that I had. And that's when I uh, contacted Dr. Young by email. In the following months, we went back and forth by email several times. Every time I had a question, he had an answer for me. And if he needed something, I tried to make sure I got it. All right. So why did I call the meeting? It's really important that all of you understand the risk. Because if you don't understand the risk, you can't talk to any one of the city council people and, and be able to accurately explain why you're concerned about this site and about this project, all right? And, and I want to try to get through a lot of that tonight. Too often these days, somebody will provide a warning and nobody pays attention. And there's a lot of different reasons for that, all right? In a lot of the uh, questions and answers uh, sessions that I've been involved in, it seems as though we're asking a lot of questions, but we're not getting any answers. And if they're trying to do the best for us, you, they have to interact, interact with us. All right. I've been to city council now at least four or five times, talking about this stuff, sharing my information. I've had one city council member that I'd talked to once. Her assistant talked to me for an extended length of time, but that was it. Carla at one of the meetings here, when I asked her about some of the stuff about the second bid, she says, well, go to the bidders conference. That, at least, was some of the best advice I could have had, because I learned a lot about what's going on here, and I'll share some of that as well. Now, when I get down to the bottom, remember I said that I, I spend about 20 hours a week since November? That's a lot of my time. I run my own business, and if I'm not working on my business, then I'm not making money, all right? But we can't sit back anymore. We can't just sit here and then at the end of the meeting and say, geez, it was a great presentation. There are some big concerns, all right? We all need to become active. 
We have a responsibility to our elected officials to speak up when we think something's not right, and we can't give up. How often do you hear, well, it's City Hall. You can't fight City Hall. Guess what? Look at the people around here. Look at how many people got, or maybe you don't know. I've been, I've been on 13, I believe, tonight. I've had an interview with City News. I was on Lounsbury this morning. I was on Evan Dawson yesterday. No, the only reason why I was on all those uh, media sort, uh, sites is because we were going to have this meeting tonight. And we were going to talk about things that the media thought was newsworthy. And we're talking about a lot of money here, so it, it's, it's critical. Now, in order for me to give you a quick recap, and we're going to have to figure out how to do this. Uh, Dr. Young, you're going to help, have to help me on this one. Let me explain what we have here. Time Warner did an excellent uh, report on the Marina Project a while ago, uh, interviewed me, interviewed people at the city, and so on, and sort of capsulized all the issues that uh, are involved in regards to this whole uh, uh, issue. And what I've done here is I've taken that interview and I've added a few things to it. And I want you to know what I've added versus what they said and what they, they asked. The added parts are simply text uh, that's put at the bottom of the screen, and it should be in basically an orange color. You never know when, when you display something like this. So let's see if I can make that work. Controversy continues to swirl around the Port of Rochester development project, including how suitable the land is for planned hotel and condominiums. Time Warner Cable News reporter Tara Grimes has been researching the subject and joins us now from the newsroom with more. Tara? Alex, for the past few weeks I've been in contact with a systems analyst who is passionate about digging deep into issues and solving problems. Bill Brown's latest focus has been on the Port of Rochester project. After speaking to several geologists and engineers, he says he had some concerns about the cost of development. So we took those concerns to the city. Behind the Port of Rochester, a developer sees potential in a large hotel and condominiums. But one analyst sees a potential hazard. It's very complex, it really is. And it's much easier to, to, to build something on a site that has a lot less complexity than this one. Because the area is a gorge and the soil is softer and made up of debris from an old iron ore mill, any future buildings would have to go deep into the ground to safely connect with bedrock. Three tests done by the city show that's between 45 to 60 feet, but Brown believes more tests need to be done. Well, there's going to be spots where you're going to hit bedrock at, at a very high point, and other places it's going to be very, very deep. The city, however, says those three tests, along with numerous others, went above and beyond its normal site studies. We have good regional, uh, regional by this definition up here, depths to bedrock, uh, and they, they've been able to work from those assumptions. The developer would definitely perform more testing on the site to specifically locate and do cost estimating for their foundation system. And that's normal. That is a normal process. Still, Brown worries the bedrock will be deeper than what the city is expecting, and taxpayers will be on the hook for hauling out and disposing of all the waste. Gregor says the developer is aware of the challenges, and the city would only pay for any extraordinary environmental costs. Just to be, you know, to be transparent on this, it's not unusual for developers to say that if they have extraordinary environmental costs that they might come back to the city and start a negotiation over that. We don't see extraordinary environmental conditions here, but is it possible? Yeah, but it's, it's on the environmental side of it. The structural and foundation systems costs are the developers to bear. And while ultimately the city says it's up to the developer to figure out if the project is cost effective. They don't see anything that's out of the ordinary or unique here that would pose uh, challenges that are beyond what they've faced in many other development sites. Brown is concerned it may be too late by then. There's so many things that make this site so complex that they should be doing a lot more research before they continue with this project at all. In December, the Rochester City Council voted to authorize the sale and purchase option for parcels of land at the port to Edgewater Resources and 
Edgemere Development, the council will vote to close the sale once the developer shows proof of financing. Alex? Time Warner Cable News reporter Tara Grimes reporting from the newsroom.